Last episode, we managed to tackle the mind-bending task of moving the ground. Ooh, magic -y. But that's old potatoes, and we demand new potatoes. And, much like old potatoes, what we covered in video one by itself is quite useless. But fear not, my curious buddies. We're about to flip the script and turn the uselessness upside down. Sen... Sel... Esu? Hmm. Yes. And behold, our path to greatness lies in the realm of variables. Now, if you find yourself in a state of confusion, unsure of this new term variable, fear not. In these next critical 20 seconds, I'll go ahead and clear that fog for you and explain just what a variable is. You can think of a variable as a magical container, which has the power to hold a value that can be changed whenever needed. There are plenty of different variable types, but the three most common we'll be using are as follows. First, we have numeric variables, capable of holding numbers, including those pesky decimals, which allows us to perform math equations such as addition or multiplication. String variables, which consist of one or many characters, such as what you would use in a password, can hold letters, special characters, and yes, even numbers again. But here's the twist, when you add two string numbers together, the math doesn't quite follow the same path that numerical values would, such as 2 plus 3 equals 23. Finally, we have Boolean variables. These guardians of truth hold the value of true or false. And the beauty of Booleans is we can toggle between them effortlessly, without even knowing their current value. And now that you're armed with this newfound knowledge, let's see how we can go ahead and implement variables. Right now we have ourselves a Hubert, and he is in a pitiful state. But with the power of variables, this zero is not set in stone. In today's adventure, we'll be focusing on the mighty move speed variable. This numerical powerhouse will determine the speed at which our ground and background move. So we'll be giving Hubert his own variable, called move speed, and setting that to a value and then in our events, we'll end up setting the move speed of our ground and backgrounds based off of that variable. And now you can see if we change Hubert's variable for his move speed from 200 and 700, the difference we get in our game. So let's take a look at how to do this in our code. We're gonna add a new sprite for Hubert. And for now, there'll be no animations, just a single image. We'll plop him on the screen and set him to the size we want. And of course, remembering to drop him behind the ground level. Then we'll add a new variable to Hubert. We'll name it move speed and we'll set it to number. And we'll go ahead and set this to 200 for now. We'll go ahead and change all the speeds for which things move and set them equal to the move speed variable we just set on Hubert. And of course the sky will be 10 times less, so we'll add divided by 10. And here you can see the difference between us changing the variable on Hubert from 200 and 700 which can be done by simply opening up here and changing his move speed variable. And that's it for this video. Next time we'll be giving Hubert some animations and checking out how to make him stop, which will involve stopping the ground. As always, any comments, questions, concerns, throw them down below, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.